Yo, what's happening boys and girls? How the devil are we? Shanksy here and welcome to my roster reviews where we review yours. Well, maybe not yours, but somebody's roster that's got in touch on the Discord and asked for it and check it out. We get to see what they're working on, how many days played, how much spent, total collection power and having a look at their teams. Now, we try and do these reviews as a community. So if you want to see, if you see anything in there that you'd be working on personally, make sure you leave them down below because the more comments down below the more it helps out for the person's roster getting reviewed and the more it helps out for just as a community checking it out and seeing where they stand what they're working on and where their roster matches up with how many days played how much spent and all that type of good stuff so the more people that leave advice down below it really really does help out hell you might even disagree with me that's cool leave it down below I'm intrigued to see it. Let's grow as a community together. Now, if you're interested in getting your roster reviewed, you can join the Discord. The link is down below. Send me a message. There is a small charge for the service, and there are three different types, whether it be done within a week, 24 hours, or whether we have a Discord call afterwards and we go through your war teams. All of that stuff is in my Discord if you are interested in getting that done. And basically, the money that we raise from it helps go towards the channel and make more content for Strike Force. So, it's like a revolving circle, you know what I'm saying? But, enough of me. Enough of me flapping me gums. Let's get straight into it, boys and girls. What's happening, boys and girls? How the devil are we? Right, today, it is time for Dr. Carl Haven's roster review he is currently at 2.9 near enough 3 million uh total collection power and he has been playing for just well he's been playing bang on 431 days <laughs> his strongest team power in that time is 277k he hasn't been war mvp yet he's got 130 of the characters collected only two of them are at max rank though all-time arena rank 241 with his latest arena rank being five 173. Uh, he's got 5,000 Blitz wins, and his latest Blitz rank is astronomically high. <laughs> but, as you can see there, 431 days played, just under $200 spent, so a low to medium spend on this account without a shadow of a doubt, certainly not wailing out, but a long old time for only two characters collected uh, at max rank, right? So what we're going to do, guys, is go through the roster, uh, see what we're working with. Then we're going to have a little look at the save squads and see what we can do. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, right, top of the shop, boys and girls. It is Rocket Raccoon there at 59k, level 70. I know he's working on uh, getting Rocket to gear tier 13 as well for that Dark Dimension run. So, absolutely nothing wrong there, top of the shop. Going on over to a 46k Loki, 43k Agent Coulson, 42k Thor... 42k shield security, 41k uh, on Nick Fury, and 40k with a shield assault. 39k there with uh, Science and Supreme, 39k there with Hela and Mordo as well. Uh, then we go a little bit further down the roster, still in the favourites, guys. Uh, and that shield medic there at 35, shield trooper at 32, Falcon at 28, Captain Marvel at 26, Umbaku at 22, uh, Shuri at 22, Killmonger at 21, and Okoye at 20 uh, with shield operative there at 18 right that is a lot of favorites man that is a lot of favorites straight away and i feel like we need to now there might be a reason for this i i keep quite a few favorites someone working on gear four someone working on stars four and stuff like that but with only two characters at max rank uh i would definitely definitely try and go right you know what this is the team that i'm working on so, we've got all of the Shield team already favorited. Um, it would make sense to, to type a stick with that a little bit. Um, but you've got Trooper there, Medic, Coulson, Security, Shield Assault, and Fury all favorited. We could quite easily um, drop, for example, Trooper off of this particular one. Not really needed um, for, for the Shield Fury team at all. And just save that type of... Save that type of clutter when you're, when you're going through and going, right, bam, bam, bam. I want to hit this, this, and this uh, straight away. Shield Trooper, in my opinion, doesn't really need to be up there. Um, really try and save your favorites, guys. To ideally, I normally recommend two lines, right? Two lines, 
whether it's for gear, whether it's for shards, or a combination of both. Uh, and then sometimes you might keep up someone up there if you're just working on them for, for a set amount of levels, right? But try not to get too cluttered with that, uh, especially with so a low few, a few people at max rank. Then we've got Punisher there at level 71 at 60k. Uh, I would definitely recommend not putting any more uh, into him. Unpopular opinion. I still like Defenders and I still like Shield Fury. Unpopular opinion. They are definitely, definitely, definitely at the far weaker end of the power curve now, though. With all of these crazy teams coming out recently. It's basically, the way that they've done it, is every team, every synergy team since the Defenders has just got more powerful than the last one, right? Just got more powerful than the last one. Hence, creating a problem that they sell us the solution. So on and so on and so on. So, although I still like the Defenders, I definitely wouldn't be going into uh, into them any more uh, than you already have done. Just with so many crazy strong teams out there, right? Uh, then we've got Luke Cage in there at 54. Groot in there at 52. Jessica Jones at 50. Star-Lord at 49. Iron Fist at 49. And Daredevil at 49. That completes the Defenders. Definitely going to be the biggest team here without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, I think there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. I just wouldn't be putting any more resources into them uh, whatsoever. But now we're in a bit of a catch-22. Is would I finish off farming them? And I probably would. I probably would. I feel like the jump from six star to seven star isn't astronomical. But it is good for focus. It is good for resistance and things like that. However, this is one of those strange hero collector games where a two or three, four star characters are actually still viable in quite a lot of instances, right? Like, I don't know if you guys ever played Star Wars Galaxy Heroes, for example. You got a three star already, it just weren't viable. Four star, it just weren't viable. This game is a little bit different, but still to, to creep out that extra power is well worth doing. That extra bit of damage, that extra bit of focus uh, really, really does help, you know, getting that sixth, uh, seventh star. Is, is well worth doing. And especially if you want to focus on, on a team-by-team -team basis. Right, then we go down to uh, Thanos at 44k, Minerva at 44k, Miss Marvel there at 38, and A Monstrosity there at 37. Now, I just want to quickly look back up, guys, and see that uh, Scientist Supreme is at 39. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure A Monstrosity wasn't a massive, um, massive compared to the rest of the team. Uh, then we go to the Scarlet Witch there at 35, uh, Doctor Strange there at 35, Graviton there at 34, Black Panther there at 34, Vision at 33, Mantis at 32, Amos Salter at 32, Pyro at 32, Sh uh, Aim Researcher at 31, um, Drax at 31 as well. Okay, and then we're going to move down a little bit to Captain America at 31. Five red stars on Captain America, that's pretty damn nice. Uh, Ronan there at 30, Juggernaut at 29. Kree Cyborg at 29, with Ghost Rider there as well at 29. Aim Security at 29, Deadpool, uh, Noble, Heimdall, and Spider-Man, all at the 27, 28 mark. And then we move down again. Uh, we've got Sif there at 26, pretty much 27. Nova at 27, Elsa Bloodstone at 26. Uh, Green Goblin at 25, with Magneto there at 25 and a half. And Sentry at 24. Uh, Mystique, Hand Assassin, Gamora, and Korath. All there at 22 as well. So we, we seem to have gone quite wide. But not very deep, right? And uh, I, I, it does help having a few bigger teams. And then going wide. It, it, it's, it's an arguable situation, right? But I prefer working on one team to a strong point of view. Like you've already done with the defenders. Then let's work on another big strong team. Um, to another point. And that's going to help out elsewhere as well. As opposed to, all be it gradually, slowly, slowly, slowly building them all up. Uh, I, feel, I feel like you might get a little bit more bang for your buck going team for team. Uh, Rhino there at 22. Sabretooth there at 21. Kree Oracle at 21. Merc Lieutenant at 21. Um, Venom there at 21. Kingpin there at 21. Night Nurse, Kree Reaper, Kree Royal Guard and Vulture all at the 20 marks. I think it's also a little bit different. When we first started the game... Um, like two years, two and a half years ago, there, there were a lot fewer characters, so it was easier to put your focus quite wide. Now, with so many characters, if you spread that net just far too thin, you're just not going to catch it. Um, there, there are so many good characters, so many good teams, 
that spreading that net far too wide, I feel like can be a bit of a mistake at this stage in the game. Crossbones is in there at 20, Merc Riot Guard in there at 20, uh, Mysterio Hand Sorceress, Ant-Man, War Machine, Storm, Phoenix. See, I feel like Phoenix as well should be miles bigger. Like, miles bigger. I would be dropping so many characters to work on Phoenix. She's game-changing. Uh, I know that you're looking to, to really strengthen your arena squad as well. And I feel like Phoenix is, is literally your answer. Like, literally your answer. She's a phenomenal character. Um, and I would literally be dropping absolutely everything to work. Now, if I'm not mistaken as well, I've actually got my account open in, in, here in the background. She is also uh, a hero global, right? She's also a global hero. So she will also work on that uh, that heroes node that you're stuck on. Just because I used uh, heroes on the actual node, and it, sorry, it was very easy with shield. Don't feel bad if you have to drop one or two of them guys out to replace them with someone like Phoenix is absolutely huge. She may die, and it may not be okay to auto the node as a result of that, but she's going to carry that whole node. Like, you can easily play that yourself real quick, three or four times, whatever, um, because she is an absolute beast. Phoenix is top priority. Top, top, top priority for this roster, dude. Uh, then we go to uh, Yondu at 18, Shocker at 18, and uh, then go move down to Wolverine, who is one of the seven... Uh, Seven stars. I did wonder who them two were going to be. Uh, Wolverine obviously being one of them with the dailies. Carnage there as well. Five red stars. Really, really good character is Carnage. Uh, pretty much there at 17. Handblade Master. Uh, Electra Hulk. Miles Morales. Quake. Wasp. Iron Man and Toad. All around the 15 and a half mark. So very, very, very close together. Uh, all of this roster, guys. You're not seeing any big, massive jumps. And to be honest... That could actually be a bit of a, a bit of a pain at the moment, right? Uh, then we go down to Bullseye there at 14. Cable at 14. Symbiote Spider-Man at 14. Uh, Human Torch 14. Ironheart. Winter Soldier. America Chavez. Invisible Woman. Rescue and Namor. Invisible Woman again. A very, very good character to level up for a lot of different styles of content. And again, is actually very viable in the arena. So if you're looking at like just off the bat, Who's going to make the biggest impact to my arena team? Um, Phoenix, without a shadow of a doubt. Without, literally, there is no character that's going to help your arena team out as much as Phoenix is, right? And Invisible Woman is a great, great um, person to put her with as well. So Invisible Woman is actually really solid support in that arena team. Even like at the top 10, um, even in the top 10 of most arena shards, you will see combinations of... Of Phoenix, Black Bolt, Invisible Woman, Ultron, all that type of thing. Um, he, he, like, throughout the thing. So, Invisible Woman is a great character. Rescue is there at 12. 7. Namor, uh, there at 12. Then we go down to Hawkeye at 12. Thing at um, uh, pretty much 12. Hydra Scientist, Cyclops, Crystal, Merc Soldier, Mr. Fantastic, Black Widow, Karnak, Ravenger, Boomer. And then we go down to Hydra Rifle Trooper, Hydra Armor Guard. Pretty much the bottom of the roster. Uh, Taskmaster is a phenomenal character to work on, as well as the rest of the mercs. But, very, 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 very war-specific. So, don't feel like you need to rush him up just yet. But, a low-level Taskmaster with mercs will actually do wonders in war, dude. Uh, then we got Domino, Blob, Hydra, Grenada, uh, Strife, Yo-Yo, Psylocke. And at the very bottom of the shop, we got Merc Sniper. Nebula deserves to be there. Uh, Colossus. Uh, Mr. Sinister, Proxima Midnight, Aim Infector, Ravenger Stitcher, Corvus Glaive, Hand Archer, and Ravenger Bruiser. So, that's what we're working with. But, what are the save squads? So, straight away, things that I wouldn't be working on anymore, or things that I would be working on straight away, I wouldn't be taking up Night Nurse any higher um, at all. Captain Marvel would be a really good shout to start working on. She's a very, very, very good character. Uh, definitely drop some of the favourites. Try and be a little bit more precise with what you're working towards. Um, might really, really help out. Aim Monstrosity, I wouldn't be taking up any higher at this point in time. Aim Researcher, I wouldn't be working on at all at this point in time. He's actually one of the aim people that gets dropped out of that team very, very quickly. Uh, so Aim Researcher, I wouldn't be taking up any higher at all. Uh, Graviton's a great character. But again, situational. Probably not what's needed at the moment. Um, honestly, I think the biggest point, Juggernaut and Magneto, again, are also a great combination uh, for the arena. 
But I don't think there is anything more game-changing, groundbreaking, and amazing than that Phoenix, dude. Start working on that Phoenix. And literally, if, if, if you just need to... If you just need to stop work on everything else for like a week and only worry about Phoenix's gear, spending your gold on her leveling and uh, and stuff like that, you're not going to be disappointed at all. At all. Like categorically, promise you, she's one of the biggest standout characters in the game. Right. So now we know who we're working with. Let's have a little look at save squads and see where I'd prioritize working on what squads. Right, so no surprises at the top of the shop. We knew we were going to see them. Uh, the defenders there at 264 power. Actually a really good power number for them. I think they're still a very viable team as it is. I wouldn't take them up much higher. Uh, I would probably worry about getting those uh, extra stars on them. And then that would be about it. Obviously any other additional power creep would come in. Just for getting red stars and things like that. And that's something you can't control. Uh, but 264 is more than enough. Uh, then we go down to the Guardians. Um, the old BKT, uh, like it a lot, nothing wrong with that, solid positioning as well, with Star-Lord next to Rocket there, Thanos in the middle, going to be generating energy for these guys as well, um, solid, obviously Minerva could do with a little bit of work, could do with getting some more stars on her, uh, but it's not really farmable, so it's not really something that you can worry about nor control. Uh, then we go down to a really, really nice Asgardian team, I like this a lot, um, nothing wrong with that. Obviously, Hela would be a, be a big priority. Thor, when you can get him, I wouldn't really worry too much about it. Hela's a very, very game-changing character, though. Like, if I was to have any one of these guys miles higher than the other, uh, it would be Hela all day long. Thor being a close second, especially in war. Uh, but Hela, for me, is just all-rounder. Uh, it's great in so many aspects of the game. Where Thor is very, very, like, niche for war defense, he's great. But everywhere else, he's like, oh, do you really use him all that much? Probably not. Uh, then we move down to the aim team at 173k. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I wouldn't actually be doing too much more with this team as things stand at the moment. It is a team that I'd work on down the line, but not just yet. Uh, then we've got the shield guys as well. So what I would be doing is dropping in um, Colson and Medic for this team, right? All day long. I feel like it just makes them such a better team. Yes, you're going to lose out on a little, um, uh, like a different team. You could even move these guys into the other team where you're running them with. I feel like just Colson and uh, Medic in this team are a miles, miles stronger team. You're not going to miss an 18k operative. Um, a trooper's pretty nice, but I, I, I still feel like you'd be much better off uh, moving in Colson, moving in Medic. Uh, then we go down to the Supernatural team at 166k power. Really, really nice team. Very, very closely built. Elsa obviously being farmable now is uh, is a big, big plus. Um, so it is a team that I'd be working on. But honestly, I, I know all I'm thinking about when I'm going through this, and I can't get past the point, is Phoenix is going to be absolutely huge for you. Like, absolutely massive. Like, it's going to be it's going to be like a different game, dude. It's, it's, it's a different game once you get hold of Phoenix. Uh, but the Supernatural team is probably one that I would prioritise fairly quick it all depends what type of levels that we get to now i like go i like going to a certain level with the team then getting the rest of the teams up to that level but i go to a quite a high level you could do that with like different different echelons as it were um so i would probably now start working on getting some of these teams to about the 250k mark let's get a few teams that overtake that brotherhood in terms of power now as far as those teams that would do that it's supernatural will be a great team to make sure we overtake the uh, the the uh, sorry the brotherhood so that we overtake the defenders, um, bumping up the uh, BKT team to overtake the defenders because even when Thanos goes off and joins Black Order, he's still a phenomenal character, right? Um, again, as guardians to overtake. So literally, I would now set this as my like benchmark is right. My teams must get above that before I stop working on them. You know, um, you don't want to be too much further into the game with still the defenders as your strongest team um right let's move on further down the line i really don't like this team i really don't like this team at all it might do really well in blitz or something um i'm trying to work out why but i don't i don't like this team much obviously these guys i think would be miles better off in the um in the shield team you could then put trooper 
next to Captain America. He would then uh, act the same as that. I think that would actually be a miles better, um, miles better win ratio as well for that. So I would definitely, definitely move them now. Uh, then we move down to the uh, Brawlers. It's not quite Brawlers. We've got Mantis in there. We've got Drax in there. Um, but again, once you've got um, Miss Marvel Tier 4 in a passive, start moving uh, any Brawlers in that you're not using and move like move the other guys around. Just get the Brawlers in there. Get the base of the team set up and uh, you'll be good as gold. Just start seeing a lot more wins with that team. Uh, then we move down to... A bit of a makeshift team, and I feel like a lot of these teams are just like, okay, they're, they're all quite close to each other power-wise. Um, it would really depend on how many times I'm picking up Blitz wins and how hard you're blitzing. So you've got about 5k Blitz wins. Um, I would probably move these guys around a little bit. Maybe just go for, okay, let's just go for a Kree team. Let's get my Kree in there and even just see where you sit, really. You know, like, get the bones of the team together and just see where you sit with it and go, right, you know what, okay, he needs bringing up, like, 2K power. He needs bringing up 4K. Whatever it is, getting the teams um, where they sit. And obviously, you do get end up with uh, leftover teams, but then you can build the hand teams and stuff like that. I feel like I feel like it's probably better to get that synergy over just pure power. Synergy wins nine times out of ten in this game. It really, really does. Uh, then we go down to the Cree team. Love this. Nothing wrong with the Kree team at all. Uh, I really like the Kree team. I think they're very, very underrated. Uh, moving down to the Wakandans as well. Uh, a much bigger Black Panther than the rest of them. So that's really good. You know, you're going to pick up a lot of wins like that. Shuri is a character that you can put a lot of investment into. You will get use out of her in uh, Dark Dimension, in um, Ultima 7, Raids, all that type of stuff. So Shuri is definitely a character that you can put um, a lot of resources into as well. Uh, other than that, I'm not a huge fan of the team. They're good. They're underrated. A lot of people really don't rate them, but they're, they're good, but they're not phenomenal, right? Uh, then we move down to quickly becoming one of my favorite teams at the moment. Like, the punch-up potential with these guys is huge. Uh, Blob is the biggest part of that, in my opinion. Uh, Magneto and Juggernaut are great for the arena. If you're looking at those combos where you've already got quite high stars on them already, they could do a job for you early doors. Um, but yeah, that, they would probably be a, a fairly big priority to start moving up. The trouble is with only like, one of them not being farmable, it's a very difficult team to, to really start working on. Uh, right, then we go down to the Sinister Six. Nothing wrong there at all. Um, moving down to a Crossbone Jondu Night Nurse. Big AOE on this team. I like this team a lot. This will win a ton of Blitz matches. Uh, then the Symbiotes, amazing team. Um, Carnage, Symbiote Spider-Man in particular, standouts on that one. And you've got nice red stars on this team. So if you were to purely look where the red stars are taking you, this would definitely be a very standout, uh, standout team. Uh, then we move down to Power Armor. I feel like they're a great team. They're slowly getting knocked back a little bit. Not ones that I would focus on with this roster, albeit... Ones that I've gone hard on on my roster. Uh, Mr. Sinister and the rest of the um, the, the Marauders. Um, yeah, leave them where they are. Like, Mr. Sinister not being farmable is too big, a, it's too big an impact. It's too big an impact. Uh, Ant-Man Wasp combo. Basically, uh, the Avengers down there. I like it. Right, then we've got the... Um, See, with Domino, I'd, I'd try and get her with Deadpool. I don't know. I think Deadpool's on the uh, on the Merc team. Uh, sorry, on the um, Hero Brawlers team, right? So I would start to form the basis of my teams already. Um, and again, Psylocke is one. America Chavez is one that could go on to that Brawler team. You'd have to bring them up in a little bit of power. Uh, but I think it's well worth it. Then we go down to the final bit. And we're just making use of the rest of the roster. Now, call me crazy... We're making use of the rest of the roster. We've got 16k there. But have I seen Phoenix in one of these save squads? Call me crazy. Why do you hate Phoenix? <laughs> Why do you hate Phoenix? I don't get it. She's amazing. Honestly, amazing. You're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pull out the stops there, baby. 
And uh, Phoenix is literally top priority. Other than that, what teams would I be working on? Keep working on Shield. You're nearly there. Um, you are nearly there with Shield. Keep working on Shield. But re rehatch this one uh, and bring them two guys together. You know, operatives, all right. Troopers, all right. Medic and Coulson on this team are awesome. You know, absolutely awesome. Bring them over. Uh, it's going to help you out a lot. Um, BK team's uh, solid. They could do with a little bit of work without a shadow of doubt, but obviously working on Hella is not all that easy. Supernatural would be up there with one of the teams. Um, but as far as like impact goes, it's got to be Phoenix. Moving that shield team around and then probably working on them symbiotes. Probably working on them symbiotes just due to the way the red stars have fallen on your account. Um, could actually be really, really, really beneficial. But... That is only my opinion, boys and girls. You watching at home, if you took over this roster right now, what would you do with it? Let me know. Let me know. I'm intrigued. Guys, that is it going to be it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, Chanksy's roster reviews. And um, if you have, Discord links down below. Live stream links down below. All that type of good stuff. But until next time, boys and girls, be smart, be strong, be safe. And I'll see you on the flip side. You take it easy.